I want to talk about how financial institutions manage interest rate risk. Well, how do financial institutions, or banks in particular, make money? Well, what do they do? They, they try and earn a rate of return on their assets that's greater than the interest they pay on their liabilities. Now, what liabilities do a bank have, does a bank have? They have uh, deposits, for example. That's a liability. Those, that money belongs to depositors. So what do they have to pay depositors in order to, for them to leave their money at the bank? They have to pay them a certain interest rate. What do they do with that money once they get it? They create assets such as loans, commercial loans, um, uh, mortgages, and they earn interest on that. So they're hoping to more, earn more interest on their car loans and their mortgages and their business loans, then they pay depositors in interest. And that's usually the case. I mean, if you have any money in the bank right now, as I'm making this video, interest rates are really very, very low. And while they're low uh, rates for mortgages and car loans, they're not zero, although the rates that people are getting putting their money into savings accounts are very close to zero at the bank. Now, this, as interest rates change, this changes the amount of net income that the financial institution receives. And over the last couple of decades, there's been a lot of interest rate volatility, which really exposes these financial institutions to a lot more interest rate risk. One approach for dealing with this or measuring this is something referred to as income gap analysis or sometimes just referred to as gap analysis. And what this does is it measures the sensitivity of a bank's current year net income to changes in interest rates. Okay, what it does is it requires determining which assets and liabilities will have their interest rate change as market interest rates change. Now some assets are not going to change. Others are going to change because they're short-term assets and you're going to either have to pay more or the money they receive when they, you know, create the loan will be higher or lower depending on the general level of interest rate. So if we look at, let's say, a general uh, balance sheet, we can look at some things that would have some interest rate sensitivities. Okay, assets with maturities less than one year. So you might have a loan that's going to be paid off in less than a year, and once you get once the institution gets the money back, they'll create another loan. But if interest rates have gone down, they may not get as much money. They may not be able to charge as much for that loan. Variable rate mortgages. These have become popular over the last uh, years as housing prices have uh, gone up. Okay, they we did have. A housing bubble and prices came back down but housing prices are, are still quite high and quite expensive for many people so some people choose not to lock in at a fixed rate where they know what the rate is going to be for the life of the mortgage they choose a variable rate mortgage so it'll be a, usually a low rate in the beginning but then the rate can adjust it can go up or it could go down usually it winds up going up and you want to look at that because these are going to reset as well. You may have some short-term commercial loans or the institution may have some short-term commercial loans and those will again get paid off and uh, the institution will be creating new loans and again can they charge a higher or lower rate. And even in the case where there are fixed rates like a fixed rate mortgage, some of those get repaid early. They get repaid early for lots of reasons. If interest rates change, people refinance. People also sell their house, pay off the bank, and then buy a house somewhere else and take out a set, another mortgage. So what happens here is, is that it may be the case that you have a, a bank has a fixed rate mortgage of 7% on an, on an individual, but rates have gone down and the individual chooses to refinance or the individual sells the house and when the bank gets the money back they create another mortgage but because interest rates are lower they're only able to charge a lower rate 
on the new mortgage they create. Okay. Likewise, there are liabilities that have interest rate sensitivities, money market deposit accounts. Okay. Depositors are getting a certain interest rate based on some money market rate. There may be variable rate CDs that adjust uh, other short-term CDs that are maturing and people will roll them over into new CDs. Does the bank have to charge uh, or will the bank pay a higher rate of interest or a lower rate of interest, et cetera, et cetera. So let's take a look at some numbers here. Suppose the rate sensitive assets, RSA, for a financial institution happens to be 32 million. So they look at their balance sheet and they see 32 million dollars in these rate sensitive assets. And then they go through their balance sheet and they look at their rate sensitive liabilities, RSL, and they find that they're 49 and a half million. Now what happens if interest rates go up by 5%? Well, if interest rates go up by 5%, then asset income is going to be 5% higher times this 32 million, right? So they're going to be able to charge interest rates that are higher and they're going to take in 1.6 million more. What are their liability costs going to be? Well, now they have to pay a higher rate to, you know, uh, depositors, uh, et cetera. And this goes up by 5%. They had 49 and a half million of these interest rate sensitive liabilities. So their costs go up by two and a half million. So what's their, what's the change in their net income? Okay, they lost 0.9 million, okay, or $900,000. Now, think about that. If the rate sensitive liabilities are greater than the rate sensitive assets, then if interest rates go up, that's going to result in lower income. Why? Because the cost is going to be greater than the extra income that comes in. Now, another way to sort of write this is to look at the gap or the income gap, which is rate sensitive assets minus rate sensitive liabilities. In this case, it's 32 million in rate sensitive assets minus 49 0.5 million in rate sensitive liabilities, so the gap is minus 17 and a half million. What's the change in income going to be? It's going to be the gap times that interest rate or that change in interest rates. So you're going to have minus 17 and a half million times 5% or minus 0.9 million or 900,000. So again, this is a this is a little nicer way to write it as opposed to doing one thing or another, the financial institution can look at the gap here and then they can get a nice picture and they can do some different scenarios. What if interest rates go up 1%, 2%, 5% and they may want to engage in um, adjusting their rate sensitive assets and liabilities using uh, various financial instruments or derivative securities like swaps. Um, or they may uh, you know, choose to sell off some of their mortgages. Okay? They may do different kinds of things, different kinds of hedging type things to reduce this in, uh, interest rate exposure. But you can't do it if you don't understand what it is. And this is a good way to sort of understand what's going to happen to the financial institution's income should interest rates change.